Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the Russian airline industry. Russia is the largest country in the world geographically and therefore is highly dependent on air travel. Now, immediately following the invasion of Ukraine, the two biggest players in the world in terms of commercial aircraft, Boeing from the USA and Airbus from Europe, both came out and announced sanctions against Russia and confirmed that they would no longer sell any new aircraft to Russia, but also, and most importantly, would no longer provide any spare parts or servicing or maintenance or software to update all of their systems. And those sanctions proved to be a major problem for Russia because over three quarters of all of the commercial aircraft in Russia were made by either Boeing or Airbus. And technically under aerospace rules, those aircraft should no longer have been flying if they lost their relationship with both of the manufacturers. Now, obviously, President Putin wasn't going to let international aerospace rules cause Russia a problem. And so new rules were passed in Russia, which allowed those aircraft to continue flying. But one of the problems that Russia is now encountering is servicing those aircraft and keeping them flying safely in the air. And a further problem from Russia's perspective is being able to source new aircraft. And the report that's recently been published reveals that Russia has spent more than $12 billion since the start of the war in Ukraine, keeping these aircraft in the air. So in today's video, I'll have a look at the current state of the Russian airline industry. We'll look at the sanctions that have been applied against Russia and what the impact of those sanctions has been. We'll talk about what Russia's plan is because they're trying to develop their own commercial airline businesses. They do have a history of this dating back to the Soviet Union. The industry has produced a number of aircraft, so we'll have a look at the details of that. We'll then talk about exactly how Russia has managed to keep these aircraft flying, where they're obtaining all of the spare parts from. We'll talk about what's happening with China, because not surprisingly, China is trying to develop its commercial airline fleet to break into the duopoly currently occupied by Airbus and Boeing. We'll then talk about the costs that Russia have incurred so far. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think the implications of what's happening right now in the Russian airline industry are for the Russian economy and what's likely to happen over the course of the next 12 to 24 months. But before we get into all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone that supported the channel. Genuinely appreciate it. If you bought me a coffee, sent me a YouTube super thanks or signed up as a patron or a YouTube member, thank you so much. I genuinely appreciate that. As I mentioned at the start of the video, Russia is the largest country in the world and therefore is really dependent on airline transport, particularly for its oil and gas industry because a lot of its facilities are located in inhospitable places that you need to fly to. Now, the immediate impact of the sanctions that were applied against Russia following its invasion of Ukraine was that a lot of aircraft were grounded. However, over the course of the last 18 months, the Russian airline industry has started to pick up significantly. And these figures published by Aeroflot, which is the state-owned airline in Russia and the biggest carrier of people, shows the amount of passenger traffic in the 12 months up to November 2023. And these figures reveal that in the month of November, 3.6 million passengers travelled with Aeroflot, which represents an increase of around 25% compared with the 2.8 million in November 2022. And if we look at the figures for the first 11 months of 2023, you can see that 43.6 million passengers flew with Aeroflot, which was a 16% increase compared with 37.6 million in the 11 months to November 2022. And if we look at the breakdown of that 11 month traffic between international and domestic, and if we look at the breakdown of that passenger traffic between international and domestic, you can see that in the 11 months to November 23, the vast majority of travelers, 34.9 million, were flying domestically within Russia. And that figure represented an increase of 6% against the 32.9 million in the 11 months to November 2022. And interestingly, in terms of international travel, there were 8.7 million passengers in the 11 months to November 23, compared with 4.8 million in the corresponding period from 2022, which represented an increase of 82% year on year. And if we now look at the corresponding figures for cargo and mail, in the 11 months to the end of November 23, over 200,000 tonnes of cargo was carried, which represented a 13% increase year on year against the figure of 177,000 in the 11 months to November 22. So you may be sitting there thinking, why are you making a video on this topic? Because the Russian airlines look like they're doing quite well. They've got year on year increases in both domestic and international passenger numbers 
and also cargo transport. But despite the increases in traffic, the Russian airline industry is struggling because it doesn't have free access to parts, servicing, maintenance, software or capital. At the time Russia invaded Ukraine, it had around 1,100 commercial aircraft that were registered for flights in Russia. And out of that fleet, 872 were made by Boeing and Airbus, 40% by Boeing and 37% by Airbus. So 77% of all of the aircraft that were flying within Russia were made by those two manufacturers. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, immediately following the invasion, both Boeing and Airbus came out and said that they were no longer having any relationship with Russia. They were severing all ties. And whilst that was common from a lot of other companies, it had a bigger impact in the airline industry than in many others. Because in the world of aircraft, you need to do checks every single day. You have to do a daily check. And every time an aircraft takes off and lands, you have to undertake a variety of tests to make sure that that aircraft is safe to fly again. And all of the parts on an aircraft have a limited life. And you have to change those parts on a regular basis. And in order to stay within all of the rules and regulations, those parts need to be officially sanctioned. So you have to keep buying things from Boeing and Airbus to keep things up and running. But the problem that Russia faced was that they had these sanctions in place and so they no longer had access to any of those spare parts. But in addition to the parts, they no longer had access to the software that was being run by Boeing and Airbus, so they couldn't do any updates. And if you've ever seen the cockpit of an aircraft, you'll know that they're relatively complicated. There's lots of digital things in there that need to be updated all the time. So Russia didn't have access to that. It also didn't have access to any of the technicians. So people who are the experts in order to solve any problems that you have, it didn't have any access to the maintenance. So teams that would come in and undertake maintenance were no longer in a position to do that. And the combination of all of those factors meant that it was simply impossible for Russia to be able to meet all of the legal requirements to keep those planes in the air. Now, as I said at the start of the video, President Putin decided that that wasn't relevant to Russia. And so the rules were changed and those aircraft continued flying. But the reason that you have to change parts and update things on a regular basis is that aircraft travel is quite hard wearing. Some of these parts wear out. And if you don't replace them on a regular basis, the risk of something happening to that plane increases significantly. And over the last 20 months, Russia has been struggling to be able to find appropriate replacement parts. However, they have managed to source spare parts through stripping and illegal purchasing. At the start of the Ukraine war, Russia had 872 Boeing and Airbus aircraft in operation. Today, they have around 450 of those planes. And in order to keep that fleet of 450 in the air, They've been cannibalizing the 422 that they've taken out of commission. So they've been breaking down those planes to remove the spare parts to then use them on the aircraft that are still flying. But obviously from Russia's point of view, there is a limited amount of time that you can do that for. Because the more you break up those planes and take the parts from them, the less parts you have available to you. And at some point you'll run out of all of those spares. And so you have to take more planes out of commission. So Russia currently has a fleet of 400 150 Boeing and Airbus. It's likely that over the next 12 to 18 months, that fleet will continue getting smaller. It may be down to 350 or 300. So at some point, Russia needs to find a replacement supplier of aircraft because unless it repairs its relationship with Boeing and Airbus, which looks impossible as it stands at the moment, as long as the war in Ukraine continues, neither of those companies are going to supply any spare parts to Russia. So if the sanctions were being fully policed and enforced, Russia at some point would run out of aircraft. However, what's also happening at the moment is that Russia is managing to buy additional spare parts through other countries. Now, as it stands at the moment, nobody is officially supplying Russia. There are no countries saying, yes, we're happy to sell on parts from Airbus and Boeing directly to the Russians. Because if they did that, clearly sanctions would then be applied against the companies that were doing that. However, there are lots of reports of this happening, and it's very likely that Russia is sourcing some spares through this source. Now, Russia does actually have a history of manufacturing commercial airliners dating back to the 1970s. 
The first ever aircraft produced by the Soviet Union was the Tupolev Tu-154 and over 1,000 of these aircraft were built. However, the other commercial airline manufacturers in Russia had limited success both during the Soviet Union period and post-Soviet Union after the breakup in 1991. And in 2006, President Putin signed a decree amalgamating all of the aircraft manufacturers into one company called the United Aircraft Corporation. And this company launched the Superjet 100 in April 2001. And since that time, around 172 have been built. Now, it's recently been announced by President Putin that the plan is to produce over 1,000 aircraft within Russia by 2030. But when you look at the history and also how Russia is currently manufacturing those aircraft, it looks like a very challenging proposition. Because since the inception of the aircraft industry in Russia, 50 years ago, they've only produced around 2,000 aircraft in total. And the plan currently is to produce 1,000 in the next seven years. So that looks like a challenge in itself. But when you look into how they're actually making those aircraft, over 50% of all of the components are sourced from overseas, from the West, from companies like Boeing and Airbus. And obviously with the sanctions in place, Russia won't be able to source any of those parts. So it set itself a highly challenging target to produce a huge number of aircraft at a time when more than 50% of its suppliers have stopped all of those supplies. And the problem that you've got in aerospace is that things take a very long time to develop and they need to be tested to failure to make sure that there are no safety issues. So you can't just start sourcing cheap supplies from China to replace things that you were previously getting from companies like GE and Rolls-Royce. As I mentioned at the start of the video, China is now looking to become a major player in the airline industry. The Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, or COMAC, launched its first aircraft, the ARJ-21, in 2015. And over the last eight years, 113 of these planes have been delivered. And in May of this year, it successfully delivered its second aircraft, the C919. And so far, three of these planes have been delivered. The company is also working on developing two other aircraft, the C929, which is scheduled for delivery somewhere around 2030, and the LRWB, which is also estimated to be produced around 2030. Now, interestingly, with regard to the CR929, that venture was originally scheduled to be a joint venture between China and Russia. Russia were going to team up with the Chinese and make this a joint arrangement. However, Russia subsequently pulled out of that deal, citing the sanctions as a reason. But the real reason appears to be the fact that China wanted to source some of the parts and the engines from the West. And clearly, Russia was uncomfortable with that because ultimately, if the sanctions are still in place and Russia has a JV, then that could impact the potential supply of future aircraft into Russia. And I think from China's perspective, they wanted to make sure that they were sourcing those parts from established aerospace operators to make sure that firstly, they had a steady supply, but secondly, that these aircraft would be entirely safe. And I think one of the interesting things to look at when we're looking at the statistics from the Chinese perspective is despite the billions of dollars that have been poured into this industry from China's perspective, they've still only delivered a handful of planes, around 116 so far. So when you look at the 1,000 planes that Russia are saying that they need to produce by 2030, so only six years away right now, it looks extremely challenging for Russia to be able to build that from a standing start particularly when you take into account that they won't be able to source any parts or equipment from established players such as Airbus, Boeing, Rolls-Royce and GE. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think what's happening in the airline industry in Russia is really interesting and also is a good reflection of potential long-term problems that are starting to build within the Russian economy. Russia is entirely dependent on airline travel. It has to have it because the country is just so large, it's impossible to go by any other route. 
So when the sanctions were first applied against Russia, it posed a major problem to them because more than three quarters of all of the planes that were flying within Russia were provided by Boeing and Airbus. And because the airline industry is so heavily regulated and all operators need to make sure that everything is in pristine, perfect working order before planes take off, the relationship with the original manufacturers is very important. But obviously from Russia's point of view, as soon as the sanctions came in, there was no longer any relationship with Boeing and Airbus. So Russia had to take a decision as to what it was going to do. And President Putin decided that it was going to ignore all of the international regulations, create its own laws and carry on flying those planes. And so far, it's managed to avoid any major disasters that anybody has heard about. But one of the problems that it's facing is that you need to keep replacing parts. Aircraft need to have a regular supply of new equipment. And obviously from Russia's point of view, they're no longer able to access the original equipment. They can't get the real parts, certainly not through any legitimate methods. So what they've been doing so far is breaking up the old planes to use those parts on the ones that are still flying. And there are two issues with that. Firstly, you're using second-hand parts, so you're taking something off a plane that's been decommissioned and putting it onto a new plane, and that obviously raises the risks of something going wrong. And secondly, when you're relying on your scrap fleet to provide replacement parts, at some point, those replacements are going to run out. So Russia is staring down the barrel of a major problem here. Now, as we discussed earlier in the video, when there's demand, a black market usually appears. And it would appear that some countries are selling parts directly to Russia that they're sourcing from companies like Airbus and Boeing. But the longer that the war in Ukraine goes on, the higher the likelihood is that the net will close in on Russia, that those sanctions will start to be tightened and they'll find it more and more difficult to find those replacement parts, even if they are coming through third parties. So Russia knows that it needs to sort out this situation. But the problem that it's facing is that the world is entirely reliant upon Boeing and Airbus. There are very few other options to turn to because manufacturing aircraft is an extremely expensive business. It takes a lot of research and development and you need a huge amount of capital. Now, usually in situations like this, China would be the obvious alternative. They would produce something cheaper and easier to get hold of. But as we've talked about, the Chinese commercial airline industry is very young. It's only produced around 100 planes so far. And it's likely that over the next 10 to 15 years, it will continue to develop very slowly. And as we also discussed, the joint venture that was initially mooted between Russia and China has now been scrapped because China wants to source things from the West. And Russia obviously doesn't want to be involved in any of that. So it's now having to develop its own commercial airline business. And that poses a number of problems from Russia's point of view. Firstly, it will need a huge amount of capital. It takes a lot of expenditure to get these things right. And at the moment, Russia doesn't have that capital. And it also doesn't have any investment partners who are desperate to come on board. China wants to develop its own industry, so it's not going to invest and nobody else is likely to either. The other problem that Russia is also facing is technical expertise because the aerospace industry is becoming more and more technical. And all of the world's experts either work for Boeing or Airbus or Rolls-Royce or Pratt & Whitney or GE. So it's going to be very difficult for Russia to be able to develop something that's going to be world class. And even if Russia does somehow manage to find a way around the capital and technical expertise issues, it's also got a timing problem because all of the planes that are currently flying in Russia are getting older and more worn out and will need to be replaced at some point. And Russia needs to build a thousand aircraft in the next six years, which looks highly challenging when you take into account that China have only built 116 over the last 20 years. Now, in terms of the impact on the Russian economy, as I mentioned at the start of the video, it's been revealed that Russia has spent over $12 billion so far subsidizing the existing airline operators. That's helping them to source all of those parts and solve all of the problems that they're facing. And as we go forward, it's likely that that bill is going to continue rising. And all of that money has been funded from the National Wealth Fund. And as we've discussed many times before, that's a finite amount of cash. And at some point, the well will run dry Russia will run out of cash if it keeps running a deficit, which it is at the moment, and funding things like these initiatives.
So the overall summary of today's video is that Russia is dependent on its airline industry. Unfortunately, from Russia's point of view, more than three quarters of all of the aircraft in Russia at the time of the invasion of Ukraine were provided by Airbus and Boeing. The sanctions that have been applied against Russia by those companies and companies like the engine manufacturers are causing major problems to Russia. They don't really have an alternative supplier that they can turn to to provide more aircraft quickly. They now have decided that they need to build their own industry that's going to represent a huge problem for them in terms of all of the issues we've just discussed. And there is a genuine risk at some point over the next three to five years that Russia could start to see some of these aircraft failing. We could see some disasters and that could lead to even bigger problems in the Russian economy. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. You found it useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.